Welcome to part 4 of this tutorial series where we're creating this stylized penguin character. So this is where we left off in part 3, so we had finished all of the modeling and we had also finished the texturing and materials. So in this part we're going to start with the rigging. Now as I mentioned in the other parts, if you'd like to help support me and this channel, you can purchase the tutorial files on my Gumroad store and you can also get the tutorial files on my Patreon page. Alright, so because we're doing the rigging, we're going to need to apply the mirror modifiers. So I'm going to hold down the Z button, go back into the solid view and let go, and then I'm also going to go back to previous. Alright, so if I go right over here to the modifiers panel and I click on these objects, um, this one we already applied the mirror. If I click on this button here, it's going to show the overlays. So we already applied the mirror on this object because we did the texture painting, um, but for the legs we need to apply the mirror modifier because if I tab into edit mode, you can see that the mirror modifier hasn't been applied yet, and so we need to apply it, and that way when we actually rig the legs, each leg can move separately. So just select the legs and then right over here on the mirror modifier you can just click on the mirror modifier to make sure it's selected and then you can press control A and control A is going to apply the modifier. And then I also want to do the same thing for the eyes and the eyebrows. Um, these objects right here, these objects we don't need to apply the mirror modifier because they're just going to open and close and they're going to kind of move all together but the eyes are going to move separately and then also each eyebrow is going to move separately. So let's just select this eye and then right over here on the mirror click on the mirror and press Control A to apply it and then you can select the eyebrows and then right down here another way to apply the modifier is just by clicking on the drop down and then clicking on apply or you can press Control A. Alright so now if you tab into edit mode on these objects you can see that there's actual geometry on both sides. So now what I need to do is I need to separate these into different objects. So I'm first just going to do it for this one here. So what I'm going to do is actually select this object and then hold down the shift key we're going to select the eyes as well and then hold down the shift key and we're going to select the the feet. So all of these objects are now selected. So I'm now going to tab to go into edit mode. And we are now in the multi object editing. So these are still separate objects. The eyes are an object and the eyebrows are an object and the feet are an object, but we are in the multi object editing. So what I want to do now is I want to make all of these their own separate object. So what I'm going to do is hover my mouse over this side and press L and then also hover my mouse over this side of this object and press L and then also this eyebrow right here and press L. So by hovering your mouse over the objects and pressing L, that's going to select all the linked vertices. So we now just have one side of these objects selected. So I now want to make these their own object. So to do that, I'm going to press P and P is going to separate, and we want to separate by selection. So I can now tab to go back into object mode, and then if I select this object, you can see this is its own object, and this is its own object, and then these are both their own object, and then as well as that, these feet are their own object. So that is what we want. I'm gonna press Control S again to save. All right, so we are now ready to add our first bone. So I'm gonna press Shift C again. That'll make sure the 3D cursor is in the very center there. And then I'm gonna press Shift A, and I'm gonna go right down here to Armature, and then I'm going to add a single bone. Now, there also are some other things right here. You may not see these though. That is because in Blender's user preferences, I turned on the Rigify add-on, um, but we're not gonna be using these. So all you need to add is the single bone. So just add the single bone, and then it's gonna add it inside the character. So if I hold down the Z button, go into wireframe, you can see that bone right there. Now I want to be able to see this bone on top of the object because I want to just be able to select the bone and then animate it and move the character. And so I actually want to be able to see the bone through the objects. So what we're going to do, just make sure the bone is selected. What we're going to do is we're going to click right over here on this little stick figure and that is the object data properties on the bone. I'm now going to go right down here to viewport display and then I want to click on in front and that way no matter what is in front of the bone you're still going to be able to see the bone so even though these objects are in front of the bone you're still able to see the bone through the other objects so I'm just going to select the bone and then what I'm going to do is hit the tab key so tab is going to take us into edit mode of the armature so if you click right up here you can see that the bones have three different settings they have object mode and the object mode is just going to be object mode just like the other objects so you can just select the entire armature and then if you press tab that is going to take you into edit mode and so edit mode is where you can actually edit the armature and you can create more bones and create kind of like the skeleton for your character. And then if you click right here, you can also see that there is a pose mode. And if you're in object mode, let me just change this back to object mode. If you press control tab, 
that's going to take you into pose mode. So if you're back in object mode, you can press tab, that'll take you into edit mode, tab to go back into object mode, and you can press control tab, that'll take you to the pose mode. And then once you're in pose mode, you can just press the tab key, and that'll toggle between edit mode and pose mode. So you can see now I just press tab, and we're in pose mode, tab again, we're in edit mode, tab again, we're in pose mode. So then if you want to go back to object mode, you can just press control tab, and that'll take you back to object mode. And if that's confusing, don't worry about that. You can also just click right up here and then change it to whichever one you want. So what I want to do is I want to go into edit modes so that we can add more bones. So I'm going to press tab or click right here and go to edit mode. So now what I want to do is I want to press three on the numpad to go to side view and we can start to create the skeleton. So in edit mode, I'm going to press G to grab and I'm going to bring this bone down and I'm going to stick it right down here and then I'll press R and R is going to rotate that and I'll just kind of rotate that bone down kind of like this. So we're just going to stick it right there just like that and then I'm also going to click right here and I'm going to select the front of this bone. So I now want to add another bone. So what I'm going to do is press E and E is going to extrude out a bone. So now this bone is connected to this bone and we're extruding that out. I'm also going to press one on the numpad to go to front view and just kind of get that size correct. So I want to bring this up so that this is right where the shoulders are going to be. So right here, wherever these circles are, that is where it's going to rotate. If you select this and then press R to rotate, you can see that's going to rotate. So I want to bring this bone up so that it's right in between where these arms are or where these shoulders are. And then whenever I add a bone, I want the bone to end right where there's going to be a joint. So I'm just going to put that bone right there. Then I'm going to press E to extrude again. I'll hit Z to bring it up on the Z axis. Just click to place that. Let's press three on the numpad to go to side view. So I want to put the end of the joint kind of right here at the bottom of the beak, but it's going to be in the very center. So that is where the neck is going to rotate. So that's going to be the neck. And then here's going to be where the shoulder is. And this is going to be like the upper torso and the lower torso. So I now want to make one more bone and this bone is going to come up here and be the head bone. So I'm going to select this circle right here and I'm going to press E to extrude. Let's press Z to bring it up on the Z axis and I'm going to bring that pretty far up to about there. So when we rotate this, that's going to rotate the head and it'll kind of rotate the neck as well. And then here's the neck and all the rest of the bones. All right, so that's good. Let's press one on the numpad to go to front view and we are going to make the feet and we're also going to make the wings. So let's do the wings now. So I'm going to select this circle right here and that is where I want to bring out a bone here for kind of like the shoulder blade and the shoulder. So I'm going to press E to extrude. We're going to bring this out and I'm going to stick it right here because again, I want the bone to end right where the joint is. So because the shoulder is going to rotate right here. That's where the arm is going to rotate. I want this to be right there. So I'm now going to press E to extrude again. And I want to put this one kind of halfway in the halfway point. If I hold down the Z button, go to wireframe and let go, you can see we added those bevels there. We added those other loop cuts there and that's where it's going to rotate. So just make sure this is about in the center there. I'll hold down the Z button, go back to the solid view. Then I can press E to extrude again. This is going to be like the lower half of the arm. And then I do want to have one more little bone just to kind of be kind of like a hand kind of like a mitten hand or something. So I'm just going to press E to extrude and make one more small bone right there. All right, and then let's also press seven on the numpad for top view. And you can see we need to move that back. So I'm just going to hold down the shift key and just shift select all of these bones. Then I can press G to grab. Let's hit Y to bring it back on the Y axis and just bring that back so it's kind of in the center there. All right, that is looking pretty good. Now we're not going to be doing the other side yet because what I'm going to do is just duplicate these bones and mirror them over and that way it'll be an exact mirror on the other side. So we're just going to do one side and then we'll mirror it over. So let's press three on the numpad to go to side view and I want to do the tail. So we're just going to select this bone right here and then I'm going to press shift D and shift D will duplicate this and then I can press S to scale and R to rotate. So this bone here doesn't actually need to be attached to the rest of the armature. It can be detached and just kind of be out here. So I can press G to grab. We're going to bring this down. Let's kind of stick it right there and then I'll select this end point right here and I'll press G to grab. Just kind of move that in there. Then I can press E to extrude and we're going to extrude that up and just kind of make that there. So we now have two pieces for the tail. So that's good. So we can now do the feet now. So I'm just going to click on this bone again and I'll press shift D to duplicate. Let's press three on the numpad for side view and I can press R to rotate and G to grab. And we're just gonna stick that in there and we're just gonna have two bones for the feet. So I'll press seven on the numpad for top view and I'm gonna hold down the Z button, go to wireframe and let go. And you can see those feet there. So I'll press R to rotate, S to scale 
and then G to grab. And we're going to stick that kind of at the end of the foot. And then this part right here, we're going to select this and press E to extrude. And we're going to bring that to the front of the foot. So like that. All right, that's looking pretty good. We can press one on the numpad for the front view and just make sure that is the correct height. Now in the next part of the tutorial series, we will be adding bones for the face and we'll be rigging the face. Um, but for this part, we're not gonna be rigging the face yet. We're just gonna start by rigging the body and then after we rig the body, then we will rig the face. All right, so that is good. That's what we're gonna do for now. So I now want to duplicate the arms and bring it over there and then also duplicate the feet and bring it over. So what I'm gonna do is press Shift C. Shift C is gonna make sure the 3D cursor is in the very center. So I now want to click right up here on the pivot point, the transform pivot point, and I'm going to change this to 3D cursor. And that way the objects are going to be transformed from wherever the 3D cursor is. So what I now want to do is press 1 to go to front view. I'm going to press A to deselect everything. And then using the box select, I'm just going to box select all of these bones right here and also hold down the shift key and select that bone. So we now have the shoulder bone, the three arm bones, and then we also have the two foot bones selected. So I want to now mirror these and put them over on the other side. So what I'm gonna do is press Shift D, Shift D is gonna duplicate the bones, and then right after that, I'm gonna press S to scale, and we're gonna scale the bones. And you can see it's scaling it from where the 3D cursor is, and the 3D cursor is in the very center of the character. So I now want to scale it over, so I'm gonna scale it on the X axis, so hit X to scale, and then what I wanna do is scale it exactly over, so I'm going to type in negative one and then enter. And that way it's brought it exactly over by negative one. And so now that is at the exact same spot. Now you might notice something. If you zoom in here, you can see this bone is kind of like rotated and that's not what we want. So I'm just going to double tap the A key to select everything. And I want to clear the rotation of the bones. So I'm going to press Alt R. So Alt R is going to clear the rotation of the bones. And now you can see that that looks the same on both sides. So let's press Control S again to save. Now what I'm going to do is go right up here to edit mode and I'm going to go to pose mode so that we can just kind of see how the pose is working. So if I go to pose mode, now you can see everything is blue when you select things they are blue. So what you can do is just select some bones and press R to rotate and you can see how the bones are rotating. So you can just kind of play around with this, just kind of see how the bones are rotating. And also um, I don't want it to be rotating by the 3D cursor anymore. I'm going to click right here and I'm going to change it back to the median point. So now it's going to rotate from where the starting of the bone is. All right, so that's really cool. So you can see if I rotate this right here, because we extruded these out, it's going to rotate all the bones. And then like the back foot is going to rotate the front foot. And this one, if you hit the R key or double tap the R key, then that's going to rotate that around. So you can just kind of see how that's rotating. We can rotate the neck and then rotate the head. Now, if you've rotated it into a pose and you want to bring it back to its default pose, what you can do is double tap the A key and then you can press Alt R and Alt R is going to clear any rotations. And then if for some reason you've moved the bones, like if you've moved them up here, just select everything and press Alt G, that is going to clear the grab. And then also if you've scaled any bones, you can select everything and press Alt S and Alt S is going to clear the scale. And so now it's back to its default T pose. Now there is one small problem that I need to fix. If I select this shoulder bone and press G to grab, you can see that I can't actually grab it. I can only rotate it even though I'm pressing G to grab. I actually need to turn on my screencast keys. Sorry about that. So you can see what buttons I'm pressing. So if I press G to grab, you can see it's not going to be moving. If I select this one and press G to grab, you can see that that can be pulled out. And I don't want that to happen. I want this bone to be connected with this bone. So what I'm going to do is hit tab and that's going to take me back to edit mode. So I now want to select this bone and then I want to hold down the shift key and select that bone. So this bone is going to be selected first, hold down the shift key, select this one last. And you can see this one is the last one selected because it has a yellow outline, whereas this one has an orange outline. So I now want to connect this bone to that bone. So to do that, I'm going to press Control P. And then I want to click on Make Parent Connected. And when I do that, now I can press Tab or click right here and go to the Pose Mode. I can now select this and press G to grab. And you can see that I can't pull it apart, so it's going to stay connected to the shoulder. And that is it, so that is going to fix that problem. All right, so now we
we can actually rig the mesh to the bones. So I'm going to click right back up here and I'm going to go back to object mode. I'm now going to select the main body and then I'm going to hold down the shift key and also select the feet. And then I'm also going to hold down the shift key and select the other foot as well. So we have those three objects selected. Then I'm going to continue to hold down the shift key and lastly select the bones. So the armature is going to be the last one that's selected. I'm now going to press control P and control P is going to bring up the parent settings. And I want to go right down here and I want to use with automatic weights and that is automatically going to rig the mesh to the bones now if for some reason blender gave you an error message when you tried to do that when you tried to use the automatic weights sometimes there's an error and if that happens the best thing that i can recommend you to do is to just make sure all the bones are inside the mesh so what you can do is actually select the bones and then you can go right here over to the stick figure and then if you open up the viewport display you can turn off the in front and just look around and make sure that the bones are all in the very center of the object. So make sure the bones are not going out of the object. And then you can just tweak anything by going into edit mode. So go into edit mode and just tweak anything. So if you need to just kind of move anything around and kind of bring it into the center, then you can do the same thing. So go back into object mode and you're going to hold down the shift key and just shift select these objects. And then lastly, shift select the bones and then you'll press control P with automatic weights. All right, so now if I select the bones, I can press control tab and that's going to take me into pose mode. And I can now just select the bones and you can see how that is working. So I can just kind of rotate this. That's looking really good. I can rotate that, that's looking cool. So this is gonna rotate the head. This is gonna rotate the neck. We also have the shoulder, so I can rotate that. It's gonna bring the shoulder up and down. So you kind of make him look like he's shrugging. And don't worry about the facial features not moving along with the head. In the next part, we will be rigging that. Um, and then you can kind of make him flapping if he's like flapping his little wings. I can also rotate that one. And then also I can rotate the tail. That's looking pretty cool. So I can rotate the tail going up and down. And then this is going to rotate the entire body. So you can see I can double tap the R key. That's going to rotate the entire body. And then also I can select these bones and press R to rotate. And that's going to rotate the feet. So we can make him look like he's walking or something. And you can also press G to grab. And that's going to kind of pull out the feet. So we can kind of make him so he moves his foot out a little bit. All right, so that's really cool. But now if you want to bring him back to the default pose, you can just double tap the A key to select everything and I can press alt R and alt G and alt S. So alt R to clear the rotation, alt G to clear the grab or the movement, and then alt S to clear the scale. And now he's back to the default pose. So just press control S again to save your project. Now there are just a couple more things I wanna do to this rig. So if I select this bone right here, if I press G to grab, you can see this is gonna move most of the mesh, but I actually want this bone to move the entire character. And you can see when I press G to grab, it's not moving the feet and it's also not moving the tail. So what I want to do is actually parent this bone to this bone so that when we move this bone it's going to move along with it and the same thing for these ones. So what we're going to do is we're going to click right here from pose mode and we're going to go into edit mode. I now want to select this bone, hold down the shift key, and we're going to select these bones and then lastly shift and select this bone. So I'm now going to press control P and then I want to make parent and I don't want them to be connected because if I make them connected it's going to move the bones to that single bone. So if I click on connected you can see it's going to mess up the movement and that's not what I want. So I'll press control Z to undo that. So I'm going to press control P and I want to click on keep offset. So now you can see that there are some little dotted lines going from these bones to this bone. And so that is Blender telling us that these bones are parented to this bone. So if I now go right here, go into pose mode, or you can press tab. If I press R to rotate or G to grab or S to scale, you can see these bones are going to move along with this bone. So I'm going to double tap the A key to select everything. And then I'll press alt R, alt G and Alt S. And then we're going to go click on pose mode and we're going to go back into object mode. Now there is just one more thing that I'm going to do before we finish up this part. I want to parent the little bit of hair onto the head bone. And this is an object, but we can actually parent objects to bones. So what I'm going to do is first select the hair object and then I'm going to hold down the shift key and select the armature. I'm now going to press control tab and control tab is going to take us into the pose mode. And then I'm just going to select this bone right here. But you can see that when we were in object mode, we also selected this object. So now that we have this one selected, I'm going to press control P and I want to click on bone. So we are going to set parent to the bone. So now if I rotate the head, you can see that object is moving along with it. And even if I go back into object mode and deselect it and then just select 
select the armature, I can go back into pose mode, and when I press R to rotate, you can now see that the little bit of hair is going to move along with the head bone. So that's exactly what I want. So I'm just going to go back into object mode, I'll press Control S again to save, and this is going to wrap it up for part four of the tutorial series. So thank you so much for watching, and I hope you've been enjoying this so far. And in the next part, in part five, we're going to be finishing the rigging. So we're going to be rigging the eyes, we're also going to be rigging the mouth, and then we will also be rigging the eyebrows. So to watch part five, I'll have it right up there on the end screen and also the link in the video description when it's released. So again, thank you for watching and I will see you in part five.